So now I will show you one of the most powerful tricks in lockpicking, which is called the jiggle test. It's something that makes high security lockpicking possible. So um, that's something you should really take care of. So we can see the first pin here, when I push him down to this here, he's already set, but there's still some movement which is possible. And if you look at my pick right here, you can see the pick there is also moving. So if I just go through the stack and for example, this guy here, he's also moving this much. So I can just uh, feel this way um, if a pin is set or not, because uh, the core here is turning and one of those pins at a time will be in the way of the core to turn even further. So there is some force between the core and uh, it's transmitted through those driver pins or each driver pin at a time into the Bible. And when one pin is blocking this way, he will be very stiff because he's squeezed uh, from both sides from the plug and the Bible. So he will not move any bit. You know this because this is what we call a binding pin. But if a pin is not set completely, so, or is not binding, so if it's not binding, I can move it completely as much as I want. So this is what a non-binding pin will feel like. A binding pin, so this one is now squeezed, will feel very stiff and give you a click after he's set. And now when he's set and there's no force transfer from the Bible to, uh, from the core to the Bible, um, <clears throat> then he has this much movement because the shear line can't be infinitely thin because then the lock wouldn't be reliable. If there's just a tiny grain of dust in it, it would not work anymore. So the shear line is always of, uh, some parts of a millimeter thickness. Here it's especially thick, you can so you can easily see it. But in real locks, you can actually feel it. So whenever you pick a lock and you're not sure if a pin is set or if he's still pinched, you should do this test to find out if he's a transferring force and therefore in the way. So that's something you should always have in mind when you're unsure if a pin has to be picked more or, or not. In the following, I will bite up on this part here, but it's not necessary to feel this yet. You will see other feedback, which is still, uh, which is already enough to pick those locks uh, or with security pins. So, okay. So here we have our lock with only two pins. The first chamber is a spooled driver pin and the key pin, which has a single serration here. And in the back, there's a standard driver pin with a standard key pin in chamber two. So I'll tension through the back of the lock so you can see better. So the first one is not binding at all because we are at the thin part of the spoolie here. So now I'll get to the second pin, just give a, a click and we dropped into a fault set. And we can see that now the core turned and now the spool is actually tilted. So it's get, getting pressed over here at this edge here and this part here is countering it. So if we now proceed and push it down even more, trying to do this without interfering with the camera. So now we can see this edge is hitting the Bible here and therefore it tries to, um, to push the spool from tilted to straight and therefore this edge here of the spool will hit the uh, will hit the plug in this direction and we will get counter rotation so if i press now on it or oh, i low left too much tension we will get some counter rotation if i do not slip so i'm using very light tension because there's some dust in this lock and we could see that the core is rotating back now and we do not drop the other pin because um, uh, we did drop the other pin, I mean, because the top part here of the spool here 
uh, is now as thick as the other pin and now the real binding order comes into play and if this was not a spool but a standard pin this one would actually bind before the second pin so now this pin here is set we can see the jiggle so this is basically the width of the shear line and we have the second pin in the back which had unset so if we push him again this far now the core is picked but i'm hitting here so i can i can turn it further so now it's it's picked so what happens if we overset for example this pin here so let's get it to here so now we have um we have overset this here and we are actually in the position where this thinner part here is just enough to make the second pin bind so this here you can see it jiggles it feels now like as if it would be set but it is not it is actually set too deep so this is how it would be long so let's bring it back to here and the pin after now let's set him okay we made it okay so now we are pinching this thin part here and we can feel and there's no jiggle just if i release some tension but it's not as springy and jiggly as it would be before so if i try to set this guy now deeper now i can push him as far as i want and there's no way of getting anything to set or click so if i can push a pin as far as i uh, as possible and he will not set i know i've set him too deep initially so keep in mind there are spooled and serrated key pins for example and this can happen so if you overset something and it will not set no matter how deep you set it this means you have overset something there's another way of finding it out um for example the americans amongst us if you pick your lock upside down this guy here should fall down now it will definitely not so if you have your lock and you're unsure you just turn it upside down and you can see if it is like this also if you're scraping on it this guy should be kind of moving a little bit you can see here he's not moving freely because he's pinched on these two sides so there are some ways to feel it but it's really really tricky so like this it would be open okay let's move to the next part of security pins okay here we can see our mushroom pin this guy is actually pretty much a spool but it has a taper on here so that's why it looks like a mushroom pin and the difference is that a mushroom pin can bind actually on this tapered part and if you push it a bit it will stop binding and so now the the second pin is binding let me hit him at a bit of, an, of a better angle so So let's try it again. Oh, it's already okay. So you see, um, I was still in the mode that I get a spool, but um, if you set the pin after him, he he is right at the sh uh, at the shear line with the thickest part, which will, will just give you a tiny bit of rotation, and so you do not really drop into false set at the moment you set another pin. So now. We can already also see that this pin here, if we scrap over him, he's moving in his chamber, so he's not overset. That's something how you can tell this, um, but it's really really hard to feel. Um, okay, what happens if we push him further? At this moment, the core turns to a deeper fault set. Maybe it's not so well visible because the fault set is not as deep as the spool. But when you turn, uh, when you push it down, the mushroom will slightly, or the as you turn it, uh, as you push it down, the core will progressively drop into the into a false set. It's not like a spool where you set the second pin, for example, and it makes 
the turn immediately. But it's like you set this pin, you push on this guy, and during the pushing, it starts to turn. So in this configuration, this here does not make a big fault set. But you can see that we have the same feedback as the spool as I press on here. The cord turns back as we have the original binding order to be the second pin later. We have the second pin now, and now it's open. So a mushroom pin is harder to pick than a spool because the feedback you get during uh, setting another pin is not as crisp as it is for a spool because you do not immediately turn into this fault set. Okay, let's turn it back. Okay, now we have a serrated pin in here. So we have some serrations in here. Um, and now, because the first pin is actually binding before the second, we get the binding of the first pin. And we could hear a click, maybe I'm not, I'll not talk during it. Okay, I used a lot of pressure here, so you could hear the click nicely. And now we are at one of those serrations. Now we are still binding, so, so there's no jiggle here. And we can see this one is even moving, so it is not pinched. Um, another click. And another click. And now he's moving like this, so we know we are at the shear line. And now let's just pick the second one. Where is he? I'm kind of at an angle, so I'll turn, and then it's easier for me. OK, and now it's picked. Um, so basically, what's it about those serration? serrations? You just get a click, but it's not, not already set. Uh, depending on the width and depth of the serrations, you might even lose the binding on this pin, and you have to pick another one to later find out you were on a serration. It's kind of like a spool, um, but you do not get counter rotation or anything. You just need some light tension and press the pin until he's set. So there's not not much you can do wrong on those. Okay, now that we have seen how they work in real life, let's think about how they work in theory and what we have to know or what states they are. Okay, we are starting from the top left. There we can see just a binding pin. This is basically the initial setup which we want to want to find. So if we have, for example, five pins, only one of those at a time will bind. So the other ones will are uh, will be uh, not binding yet, so they feel springy, as you could see in the video before. OK, if he's binding, he is just fixed, and he does not move at all. So we start to set him, and then we get to the part right of it. We have an underset pin. This is usually nothing special, because we hand it like a binding pin. Only if we have serrated pins, as I showed you before, then we get a click, but we are still in the underset state. So this means we have to feel again if he's moving, and if he's not moving, we know he's probably serrated, and just give him another push. And if we get another click, or even two of, or three more clicks, then we know it's a serrated pin, and we know how to handle him now. Um, right of this, we can see how a set pin looks. If, if the pin is set, we can feel our jiggle, or this uh, springy movement, it's very small, so maybe at first you will not feel it. Um, then we know he's set and we can leave him. And if we push even further, we will overset the pin. Usually you can kind of feel this because you can push the pin as far as you want. You will not get a click or you will not get to the part where he is in the set position. So you know from when you started uh, to set him further, you did too much. Okay, let's go to the second row. There we can see our spools. We can see that the spool here is at the thin part, but it is not binding, and therefore there's not much happening. Um, right from it, we can see a spool which is pinched at the um, at the one thick part. So we have to push it further and then get to the thin part, um, which you can see right of it. Then we drop into our fault set. We can see the core rotation there. And if we set him even further, we will get this counter rotation, which is a clear indicator of a spool. You will not get this from a set pin or so, 
There are some key pins, but this is for higher security locks um, like ASA 700 or so. Um, then we can see on the last pic picture on the right, we can see there's, there's again the spool, which is caught at the thick part, but now it's the other side. So it's almost set. If we just give it a tiny push, we will get this pin set. And if we look at the bottom row, we have some special cases. For example, um, on, master, uh, on some master locks, there are pin sticks, which are too short. So the pin and the driver pin will both enter the, uh, the plug and we can turn the core. This is sometimes dangerous because if it's in, a, in an extreme case, um, there is still the spring at the shear line and we can pinch it. So if you have turned your core and you can feel that it's not turning as easily as, if, uh, as it would be with a key, you should stop and try to find where the problem is. You can feel with the hook um, where, it's the where, where we have very high cut pins and compare with the key. If the key has a low cut pin there or vice versa, you know there's something not right and you should be careful not to pinch the spring. Okay, uh, to the right of it, we can see that the pin and the spring is too short. So we are able to set both into the, uh, into the Bible. This is usually um, used as a bypass. For example, uh, comp keys, which look like a comp, they press every pin in every chamber so far down that they all get into the Bible and we can turn the plug without any pins inside. Um, so the third picture from the left, we can see a zero lift pin. So this is basically a pin which we do not have to touch in any way. If we touch him or touch him too much, we will um, overset this pin immediately. So also take into account that there's this, you can't feel the, uh, those pins because there's the tiny amount of jiggle, which every set pin has, but those have it from the beginning when they bind. So you will never have to, to set this pin on purpose. And finally, we have some master wafers. We can see there are three shear lines and it does not really matter at which shear line we are. So we have basically something like a serrated feeling kind of, but we can't really um, be at the wrong shear line or so. We just have to be at any of those possible shear lines. This is not the case if we have some uh, SFIC stuff going on, like two, uh, two shells or so, but we do not care about this yet. Here we have the basic feedback and how you can tell which pin you, or which security pin you have as a driver. So first we have our binding pin and then we get a click and we, we check if it jiggles. If it's jiggling, it's a standard pin or something else, which is not acting as security pin. So we, just care about it that it's kind of a standard standard pin and if it's not jiggling we have the question if it's a fault set if we get a fault set then it might be a spool pin which is hitting immediately um, or which is uh, it might be a, a spool pin which is um, hit at the thin part it could be a mushroom pin which is also hit at the thinner part not at the thickest part or it could be a T-pin. A T-pin is called a T-pin because it basically looks just like a T. So we have this shape, like half of a spool or so. So it's not really important what it is. If we just handle it as a spool, we push so long until we get counter rotation or something else happens. We'll just slip off the edge here without counter rotation, so pretty easy, and we will have, a, have it set. So nothing important here so far. If it's the other way around, which you will usually not encounter in not challenge logs or in anything else than challenge logs. So uh, we will not cover this there, uh, this now, but it's, it's also not, you will not, you will not see this. <coughs> um, then if it's, if you do not get a false set, it could be that it's a mushroom pin, but he's not at the thin part pinched, but at the thick part, and you get your mush, uh, you get your fault set after you push the mushroom further, or it's a serrated pin, uh, pin, which you can find out if you get more clicks out of it. So that's basically all you need to know, because um, if you have uh, no jiggle, it means the pin is not right, and you have to pu uh, push it further. 
And every time you get a click or something happens like fault set or um, or you are after the counter rotation, you just check if it jiggles and if not, you push it further. And once you hit the, the maximum, you know you pushed it too far and just try to push it not because it's maybe a zero lift pin or you just push it a bit lef uh, less and see where it goes.